from Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, is one of the technologies that is integral to the concept of the fourth industrial revolution. Rebecca Campbell reports. Additive manufacturing in South Africa came under its annual review at the recent conference of the Rapid Product Development Association of South Africa, or RAPDASA. RAPDASA Management Committee member Marius Vermeulen gives us an overview of the country's additive manufacturing sector today. Additive manufacturing has been in the country for quite a long time. Uh, RAPDASA has been in existence for 19 years. Um, and it's covering actually a very wide sector these days. South Africa is doing fairly well in terms of development in this field. Um, from polymers, metals, um, quite a wide range of technologies that we're involved in. It's quite a number of facilities throughout the country, uh, at the universities. You get the Central University of Technology that's very much involved in the medical industry. And at the Vol University of Technology, there's a big center looking at um, tooling applications, the shoe industry, and a wide range of, of other things. There's some technologies at Stellenbosch University, metal technologies. Um, there's also um, the Aerosoft program that was developed in South Africa, which is a last, uh, very large metal, metal 3D printer that was developed. Um, and then there's also a lot of um, these machines in, in industry these days. Um, some in the metal industry, um, a lot in the polymer industry, ranging from very, very low cost machines, the hobbyist type machine, to the very high end machines supplying to medical and aerospace industries. So it's a very lively industry in South Africa. Um, I think, as with a lot of things in South Africa, we have limited resources. I think the industry is using these resources fairly well. Um, we get a lot of the support from the Department of Science and Technology, which assists us um, in development of machines, in processes on, on the R&D side. Um, and as you might have seen, the, the Rabdasa conference is actually growing fairly rap rapidly in excess of 200 delegates this year. And, and quite a lot of companies involved these days. It grew from a very academic um, industry to now getting in actual industry involved as well and uh, starting to use this for applications. We have very interesting areas of development in South Africa where I believe there's a lot of future potential. Um, at the Central University of Technology, they are very advanced in the medical field. They've done dozens of, of implants of titanium for, for customers, um, very custom specific implants. A lot of work in, in facial reconstruction of uh, patients with, with cancer, um, bone growth, etc., where they're doing um, implants. Um, other areas where we're doing very well is um, London is actually investing quite a lot in additive manufacturing in South Africa. They are developing a process to manufacture platinum powder and then to use additive manufacturing to, to produce those for jewelry, for medical and, and for um, some industrial applications. Um, on machine development, we've got the Aerosoft program um, where we have the biggest and fastest metal 3D printer in the world that we've developed. Um, and that program is also now going into industrialization phase uh, where they started to ramp that up. There's a number of these areas where South Africa is leading in, in very niche application areas and where we believe there's, there's international value that we can, can pull from this industry. Other news making headlines. Another ESCOM equity injection mooted amid 15 billion rand loss warning and MTN South Africa reaches 90% LTE coverage. South Africa's debt-laden electricity utility ESCOM is in discussions with government about yet another equity injection, as well as various possible debt relief options as part of a turnaround plan. ESCOM is in a state of severe financial difficulty. Our mid-year results will confirm again what many of us have suspected for some time. ESCOM, as it is conceived and operating today, is not sustainable. If we do nothing and just sit tight, it's not going to be long before we talk of ESCOM in historic terms. We are locked in, in a, into a permanent loss-making position 
in that our revenue growth is structurally constrained. Our operating expenditure has ballooned due to internal inefficiencies and debt load, and the debt load that is impossibly high. Coupled with that, we've not been able, uh, even though in theory, NASA should be giving us uh, tariffs that uh, are reflective of our cost and a little bit of margin. We've not been able to do that. MTN South Africa's LTE 4G technology now covers 90% of South Africa after the company deployed its 11,000th LTE site in rural Eastern Cape. Moving further, the most important thing we are basically saying boldly today is that we will get to 90% population coverage on 4G this year, which is next month. We have actually crossed 11,000 sites. The interesting part for me is that uh, 2015, we had roughly 5 million people having access to 4G. And today, we've got more than 50 million people basically on, 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 on 4G. That's Premier Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.